look at a second quest. 90% I did it offline today. Um, I kind of just wanted to get it done. So I can move on. I guess I needed the focus to do it. Hey, there's RK. I think everybody's pretty much here. It's time to watch the second quest. 90% RK. All right. So, you guys been around, yep, this is a replay. You guys had been around as um, I was working on this route on stream. I, I started off doing this as a two first route, uh, which had a triple MMG win in it. But after some route analysis, I figured out that I think this route's probably 30, almost 30 seconds faster. And you can see here, I'm, the first step is to, it's not a requirement, but it sure does improve the odds of actually getting through it to get that first five rupee. But before the end of level one, I need 10. And there's a lot of ways to do that. The first hard break of the route is if I get a bomb here. And I worked out a route that can make it on only one bomb. But we got two on this one, apparently. So, one of the things you have to do is to maximize your chance. So, I've lost my any chance of getting a consecutive count here. And I need to kill one bat. <laughs> because I need to set up the random counter to have both chances at a random 5 rupee here. Because that's the first one, and it's on the 0 drop, and the next one's on the 4 drop. So, it, you, there's only one way to do it. And I got it. I didn't really need that rupee, but I picked it up because I was going to pick up the heart. And that's optimal bomb placement. And then I get to use a bomb on him and save myself two seconds. Because I got an extra bomb. But still, this level one time is garbage. And that's, uh, that's due to a few things. It's the bat situation where I had to turn around to get a bat. And the, the levers that spawned behind me, that caused it too. So here I'm going to save. I'm going to start the MMG manipulation. Save, reset. Uh, and I'm resetting and I'm mashing through those, uh, I'm not actually mashing, but I'm trying to get through those menus as quickly as possible. Very precise movement, move half tile up, place the bomb right there, it could be a pixel or two left or right, but that's it. Um, and then the 50 will be in the middle. It's just a timing thing, and in order to work out the timing, that's how I did it. Mash fast, move certain ways, put the bomb at a certain spot. And I've gotten pretty used to that when that Octorok is in a certain position, because we're still basically on a frame-perfect manipulation, almost. As much as this game cares about frame-perfect when it's RNG, that there's a hard drop when that guy is killed right there. So now I gotta work up, uh, I like to work up a count before I enter two, even, even if I do get the double bomb drop in level one. Um... Because I, I need a lot of bombs still, and just, it's like, really the last spot in the route where bombs are pretty significant as an issue. So, in here, nice pattern. Here, I want to force a bomb, and I went in with a, a low count. And I don't know why I thought, okay. Got a, a free random there. The first bomb to drop was the force, the second one's the random. If I only had w gotten one bomb drop out of level one, what I would have done is used bombs only were absolutely necessary, and I would have entered here with a 7 or 8 count in order to force a bomb in that first room. Now, other than the fact that I worked toward the left in the room when the door's on the right, that was a pretty good room. If I just worked right to left with my sword, that would have been more effective. Just throwing the beams leftward. And here we have the last part of this route that usually, that has a high tendency to make me reset, and that's a manhandler. And I just managed to squeak by on that one. So now, for the rest of the run, bombs aren't... I still have to, to manage them to, somewhat, but it's mostly for speed. It's not, it's not like a hard break anymore. 
and having a that split there is actually quite good because the best split I've ever done there is without clearing this room the first time through. All right. <laughs> awesome. Till the uh, random race starts. Cool. Uh, so actually, through here, I'm, I'm counting still. I can start counting from that manhandle kill because I want to. Well, I don't know. With seven bombs, I don't need to. I'm not sure if I did in this run. If I had lower bomb counts. Actually, yeah. What am I doing here? I just had a bad room. That's all that happened here. Totally meta. Um, that's a, another place to force up my bombs. I want to exit level 2 with at least 5 bombs. Uh, one of the nice things about level quests is that, like, this room right here, it has a floor bomb. So, if I come into that room with one bomb, I can get the right two guys and stab the left one down and leave with... Um, I can leave with bombs. And leaving with four bombs is okay. Five's just better on time. So, as like I was saying, the hard breaks in this route really aren't there because the, they put bomb drops at the end of levels and the route, basically, you go through those levels before you need them, the, the bombs in the next levels. Of course, Gleox at the end of level two because the second quest is easy. And here, we gotta bust out the 100 secret and pixel perfect placement on that fire. One pixel further right and it would have not opened. Just squeaked by that guy too. Ooh, nice. Good clip. And this, I now have. I've got a muscle memory going there. I always menu, like, the frame that I turn upwards so that I remember to go right in my menu because I got tired of messing it up. And here, I actually want to blow the recorder very early. And then I want to walk straight up there. I walk right up there because if the Gini goes left, he's going to hone in on me. And then it gives me room to go left around him so that I don't have to slow down entering the grave. And here, you're waiting for the... Oh. I've, I've considered actually damage boosting through that guy. That wasn't the right way to handle it. If you stand in the right spots in that room, he'll go down, but you do have to wait a little bit. And the amount of time I wait is probably worth giving up a damage boost somewhere else in this level. So in here, I still get to do two damage boosts, and this is the best one in this room to go up there. If you only have one heart to spare, do that. And here I took a single boost instead of double off the traps. And if I had another half heart, I wouldn't have had the bat boost because it's the second bat in the room needs to go straight down to get the boost pattern in there. I know. But baby, I'm all about those pixel perfect candle placements. I'm in it. I'm in it. The smaller the, the save, the more important it is. That was one of the interesting parts about watching the. Uh, I think it was probably mythical, maybe, talk about bad breaks today when he's doing his kabuki run. Talking about the smaller the, the the saving, the higher the risk to get it, the more likely he's to get it. And I was like, yeah, that's awesome. That's my boy. <laughs> so here, do some pumping. Gotta wake up the Armos, and I botched the grab twice. And end up stabbing him. But here, I'm gonna push through. I come up on the top of this screen so that I can push through that and not have to wait for the P-hat or even have to clip, because even clipping would be you know, a decent time loss. Oops. Bunch of uh, left-right scrolls here, very easy. Very easy. I was, I've gotten wary of taking damage on that screen, like two and a half hearts is dangerous enough. And now I actually wait in the bottom of this room for them to move away from me because I found that waiting at the bottom of that screen uh, drastically improves the overall pattern. And here I'm going to pause strat right there to see if those guys are throwing and then I'm looking at the next guys. I don't want to take any damage. It's worth pausing because if I take a hit from them, assuming I survive the level, um, it's still going to cost me more time than a pause if I take the damage to, and refill it. No drop from the dogger. 
course, he can drop Fairy sometimes and kind of negate the damage you take, but it's still better that you don't rely on that because you really don't get the Fairy that often. How'd I do in this room today? This room's kind of annoying. In some routes I've done, this room is like free every time. Yeah, I had a terrible room. And it's not that there wasn't the way through it, I just missed whatever it was. I haven't even, I haven't looked at it a second time to figure out what it was. It doesn't really matter. Not right now. And I don't want to take damage in this room, so I'm watching that bottom left Korea and trying to avoid him. And here, coming up on this room, the Dodongo boss, the way I walk is very specific, and where I place this bomb, I will always place it there. And in this case, it didn't pay off. But sometimes you get all three, and most of the time, you get at least one, and sometimes you get two. It just didn't pay off this time. Ow, I missed him. Oh my god, look at that. That's heart-pounding panic right there. And that's where all my time at level 8 went, in that one room. <laughs> no heart drop. I'll, I'd like to have the beam sword for this section. Now I've got to wait for him, and I take a hit. Nice. And I want to kill him. Uh, killing him here changes the patterns in four, and I'll point out what rooms um, I find are improved by killing that guy. I'm not sh absolutely certain that it's worth doing, but most of the time when I do it, I'm still only plus one to gold. So it really doesn't cost that much time to do it. And I think once you see the room, that it improves the pattern, and you, you might agree that it's worth doing. Troll Dongos are jerks. So now I gotta do this room beamless, and usually yeah, I just kinda wait there for a second and go underneath it. That's almost how it works almost every time that way. And I get out of here with a count, but it's what? What count is it? It's five and one. It's a six count, yeah. And here you it's really annoying that turret is absolutely annoying, so I'm I'm paying attention, I'm gonna duck down having paused twice while I was in the air. Nice pause buffer to avoid that damage and keep my nine count, which I was like, I'm gonna force it in here. And then they were like, we're not coming by you. Okay, never mind. I'll just do it in this room with the guys I'm gonna kill anyway. Genius work. Nice. No, I don't have a sword, so I just went ahead and bombed him. I should have bombed them more aggressively, it could have been a lot faster. And here, this is the room that we improved. By moving that pattern, I can walk straight up in that room. And I was fishing for a heart here so I could have beams for the next room, oh well. But yeah, I can walk straight up through that room and sword and get through it, instead of ducking and dodging around in it, possibly taking two hearts. And I know that usually in this room, the fifth guy can drop a heart, because we've reset at some point in this run and reset the random counter and brought it to something more reliable. And finally, I had a revelation. It was actually on this run that I'm like, why am I going up the middle in this room anyway? I don't need to go up the middle. I can bomb a whole tile left or right of center and still break that wall open. And then we pay the old man and... And I went, I walked down to get a damage boost upward because I saw what was happening there. If I tried to go up, I would have been boosted down. And I wait in this room too now. I wait for them to, to make their move. I don't go first. And I think it, it ultimately saves me time because when I try to go first, I end up pausing more and dodging more. I was a little bit nervous about my total bombs here and how badly it could go. So I didn't use the second bomb. I didn't want to go down to two. Because if I miss the first bomb on the Dodongos, then I lose a menu. I have a white sword. 
clean room. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause buffer a little bit. I don't think it did me any good, but I'm gonna delay putting that bomb down so he walks into the smoke. I know that what his timing is now for that. I was lucky. I felt a little bit lucky to get that guy with that smoke. And now when I go in this room, first thing I'm gonna do is walk up and right a little bit and bomb to the left and get that damage on that left blue dark nut. The right side never cooperates, though I can't ever get him to do something useful for me. And here I want this blue dark nut to come over. And look! He dodges the bomb! And then I take Pole's voice damage. These guys are... yeah. And the Pole's voice drive me nuts. If anybody got... To, if you get to this part with uh, Beam Sword, then you're gonna have a way better time. And there's my clip. Clipping up to uh, push that block is way faster. Like, to walk around the side of that block, it takes... 48... Well, it takes 36 frames... Versus the 12 it takes to... Or 24 it takes to clip and push up. So it, it's a... It's a decent time save and it's really cool looking. Just takes you, you just gotta practice a little bit if you're gonna save time with it a significant amount of time. So time to up an A. It's one of the things that is always a deterrent for up and A routing is using an up and A to, to get to navigate, but then getting to your destination with three hearts. And here I'm fishing for a heart just in case it somehow would make a difference. Uh, I've done, like, tiny little not very serious tasks, but the idea of doing a very long one... Um, I don't... I would... I'm not, like, crazy about, uh... myself personally passing as a pure task. I like theory. I like to use it as a... as checking theory as a way to check my math and the hypotheses. So this room seems like a really bad room, but it's not. Although I almost die in here, it's not that bad of a room. I didn't have to be as aggressive as I was, and that could have killed me. He could have turned up and shot me right away. That could have hurt. We got through it. It's not a hard room, you just, you know... They, uh, they usually give you an alley. takes nerves. It takes, you know, some tough nerves, but... And I've considered trying to force a bomb in there. The problem is I almost never get there with the count because of the bubble. The blue bubble that likes to get into the corridor stairway. So now the second half is even more fun than the first half. I have to get through uh, many more rooms with, again, three hearts. And this room, uh, you see me weaving around this room, it's because I don't want to take damage. And it gets very tight. You saw me pull that trap on the bottom to the right, just trying to wiggle around. And if you wiggle and you pull the trap into the door, you can really hurt yourself. And if you have lost your sword, by the way, in this level, that's the point of no return. Once you go through that door, you might as well up an A right there. I lost a run earlier in the day when I didn't do that. I got into that room without a sword and I knew I was boned. And I lost a really good run. But I don't think it was better than this run up to this point. And this key is, <laughs> it's also one of those butt-clenching keys to get. And the reason we don't want to run out of bombs is because we like to get that guy with bombs. Otherwise, we don't need bombs to progress the level to, to navigate it, to clear it out. We just have a manhandler way that's way more convenient. Same with the, obviously, that wizard room. Without bombs, that wizard room is going to take a lot more time. It'd be kind of weaving in that 3x3 three three square that you spawn in. Now we get a Gleok. I like to, with Gleok, I usually like to wait for him to make a hole before I start going in there. And not dying, you can see, saved quite a bit of time. And I'm running against best split times here. Not even my PB. The PB time, I was probably ahead by more than a minute now, because I didn't die in five.
And now we up A again, but we're going somewhere very easy. And in that up and A, I did have to change the recorder in order to save time. And at that, I just, I was holding diagonal. When you get to that spot, if you're holding diagonal on the controller, you won't actually turn up to push that block. Uh, but not dying at that level, it had my heart up for a minute, and I kind of, I was a little off there for just a moment. Thinking, I was getting ahead of myself, thinking if this is the run or not. I'm not to stop myself and think, what do we got to do next? Lay clip survives. Nope, just kidding. Not needing hearts means we get to skip the dongos here. This is the boss of the level. They dropped the heart container. Goodbye. So this place is basically here in the route as a way to refill before going to 7. It's just... You could you could put this level in a lot of places in the route after the recorder. It's a kind of a wild card, almost. Not really, because in this case, I, I needed to go to 7. I'm gonna go over there and grab the key. I do things differently every time. Sometimes I go left, and then I decided it's dumb to go left. If I go right, I've gotta get the key anyway. And that might pull the gorillas off to the right and get them closer to me so I spend less time in the room. No light clip, new PB. Yeah, the PB isn't good enough. It's not a 32. The, the standards change all the time. Look, my best possible time is currently 32.51. I want to take note of that. Best possible t time with 15 minutes left in the quote-unquote PB time on this route. 15 minutes left in them at a 32.51. Alright, level 7. Nice. I uh, held diagonal entering and clipped myself backward and got stuck for, you know, probably a full second, so that's good. It's a good way to spend your time. Just gather your thoughts before you enter the longest combat level. Good damage boost. I'm glad the dark nut had gone up instead of down. That makes it a lot easier. I always go up over this block now, because he's going to end up coming upward anyway. If you try to go down, it changes the way he moves, and it, you put yourself in a bad situation. You give yourself fewer options to dodge his fireballs and to place your bomb in a in a helpful location. Like, you usually, you want to be able to place it ahead of his movement, you know? But you can't be ahead of his movement there. Alright, this room turned out pretty good. And I had a count. I knew I had a count still from that manhandler. Because it was a perfect bomb, I had a five count. And swing the sword once in there. Oh, yeah, I did. Swing it. Swing it leaving. And again, we have that pattern. They do that every single time. They always do that. And we got this great down Goma. Beautiful. So now I'm counting again. I've got a one count. Five. I'm a little nervous here. Once again, I've I've started thinking about how the run is. I know Jay Coper would like that too. When I did the room, I'm like, Jay Coper will like this. I hope it's the run. So I'm thinking about things other than... I'm getting ahead of myself. And here I'm stacking count again. And I wasted a lot of time doing it. I want you to to think about how long I wasted on that count. Uh, did I get the next one? Jacober might not be as happy with this one. So, I was stacking a count to get another bomb force in this room. And I didn't pay, even though I had the money, because I wanted my rupees still. We have an eight count, though. Whoops. Whoops, I, dude, if I had forced that, this room would have been done already. It would have been done by now, because I had three more guys. I wasn't willing to go down any more bombs. I should have. I should have given up, because I can go down one more bomb, but I didn't want to do it. And it turns out to pay off, because I knew I didn't kill any, so I knew I left this room with a six count. Now I have an eight count. 
So even though I didn't get the last one, I, I paid it. I kept working forward with the bomb count. That was lucky for him to turn up. And some pause dodging there. And that working, the, when I wanted to work that guy down two hits. When I worked him down two hits, I was like, all right. Even if one of these guys turns and I only end up killing two of them, I'm going to get the bomb. And, and, better yet, I'm sure Jake Hooper would appreciate what else happened. And that's that I leave this level with eight bombs and the recorder is on without having the menu to it. Eight bombs is a luxury. I don't even need eight. I really don't know what to do with them. I'm taking, taking safety heart here. I don't know why. I'm like never going to need that heart again, probably. Because I'm going to, like, the Silver Arrow segment of level 9 is easy, and then I'm going to up A from that. Spoiler alert. So max hearts really don't matter that much. But I am going to go into 6. With 7 hearts instead of 6. So that means 3 available blue whiz robe hits, not 2. Nice. I, I tried to walk back into the rock there. So, by the way, plus 4.1 to gold on level 7. And I spent all that time just in that one bat chamber trying to get a kill. So here, pause. That's a menu strat right here. The menu here, so I get to look at this room. I didn't even have to go back to the right. It actually wasted time to place the bomb in the center. I could have walked straight up from where I had been before I turned back right and still would have opened the wall with the bomb placement. And then... I was a little impatient there, and so I got phased upon and lost two hearts. But the same thing, you can pause throughout those rooms to, to give you to check your alleyway. And I want to get rid of the oranges here because they're the most annoying thing. And I've just taken more oh, whoops, whoops, I'm walking in the whiz robes. Now it's time now it's time to start doing some saver strats because shit's getting bad. I've gotta clip up this thing. I'm getting shot at while I'm trying to do clips. And I keep missing the pixel. I stepped over the pixel twice on that ladder that's really hard to see. It's really hard to see that on this level. Because you're not clipping on water, you're clipping on the red stuff. Jesus, merciful Christ, dude. I can't even believe I made it through that. I thought, well, shit, if I made it through that, this runs easy. This runs easy from now on, but I'm gonna be careful with my two hearts. Because I still have the Goma Room, and it's... In order to do the Goma Room, as fast as possible, it's usually easiest to just take damage. Right, the whiz ropes are just crazy, dude. I mean, you have to have nerves of steel in that room, and I figured that out. Once I realized that that's just what that room takes to do, I was like, alright, well, I can do that. I'll just... I'll just do it. Get the straight down strat. And you can get knocked sideways very easily in this room. It is important to try to keep your, to like hit, get, take Goma's fireball that's coming down on you rather than the fireballs coming from the left because they will knock you to the side. You want to get knocked down. And now we got to go to level 9. So if I don't leave level 7 with enough bombs, I can clear a room in that level. The first, that dark first wizard room has a bomb on the floor, but... There's also the bomb shop up here, and on this route you'd have extra money to do that. So one screen to the right's bomb shop. If you leave seven with low bombs, oh well. You can buy more. Yeah, exactly, and the fireball put me down to the safety heart, which is another thing I was getting at with that safety heart I picked up an eight, seven, the gray level. And here I'm trying to dodge P hats and yep. Good times. Walked one pixel into the sword beam and dodging more sword beams it's so tempting to clip into this level because it's so easy you're coming from that direction but then you glitch out the pallet now I gotta bait that down and push into the wall 
I had never worked out if there's any faster way to do that. I don't think there is. I doubt it. And here I just hold down right for a little bit to get around that corner, and then you gotta step left of that hole momentarily if you don't want to get shot at sometimes. And you always gotta jump up there to get around the bottom left fireball. And here I'm gonna use... Nice, I did a bomb plus sword combo, but that bomb placement was terrible. And here I can just, I really can't just give these hearts up. Because I'm going to up A. The safety really doesn't matter that much here. Got the bat boost pattern. Reset my count. That's actually going to come back to bite me a little bit. Um, it's better to have a, at least like a one count. If you can get out of that silver arrow with a five count, that's probably optimal. Or a six count. Actually, a six count would be optimal. And I'm sitting back because I don't want to die, and I get a lucky fairy. That's not forced. I have a 10 count right now. And I'm thinking about the fairy. I'm, I can get a fairy off of that silver arrow. Up A. That's another reason it's not that risky, and I'm starting to shoot stuff. And dodge fireballs. And then I realize I can't get to 16. And I realized, you know, I can't I can't get the 16, but then again, I also got a Lucky Fairy, so look, why am I wasting time? Why am I even wasting time on this? Screw it. Let's just go. I'm gonna check, make sure they aren't in my face. I got... All you gotta do is hold up right once you get to a certain point in that room. But I did. Nice movement, he went down instead of up. This room just hugged the bottom right. This room is not bad on this. Okay, so... You just go in. If the bubble comes at you, use him to boost and move upward. If the bubbles move away and the like likes come at you, you just sort him away because you still have it. It's a simple... It's not a tough puzzle. And uh, you just watch out for the blue whiz ropes that are moving above you. And I felt like once I got to this point, I was like, this is in the bag now, I think I've got it. Nice, he moved away from me, which is so much more comforting than when he comes toward me. And a heart. What a champ, man. They dropped me the drops this time. The hearts and the fairy. So good. Forced bomb. Don't need it. So here, I'm going to use that strat. I'm going to step down a bit. I'm going to wait, and when he's fully extended, I'm going to stab at the left of that side of the orbitals. And I got two hits, so the first one that I kill, I've already locked him up. He's stuck. He's stuck in that position. He can't come back out of it. So I can just sit here and work away at him. No drop. No big deal. I was pretty happy, though. Five and a half hearts here is great. Swag bomb. Got the swag bomb. So... I tried. I tried to get this, but he wasn't there, so I just went to the left. And dodging. Time to do this bullcrap again. This bullcrap. So what I'm trying to do, actually, is every time he does this, I'm trying to pick him up at a different interval to try to get him to come to the left. And I finally got that lock. I was so happy. I was almost... I was happy, and then I was like, man... 33-16? Wow. Do I want to carve another 17 seconds off of this? Well, I was trying to beat a 34. I was trying to get a 33. And I got a 33. And then I kind of wanted a 32. But not that badly. And look at the video still going. Even the... Old PB run had a fairy off of the lamo. <sighs> Did it. Did it. That's the real deal, guys. And it could have been better. And it could have been even better. But I'm happy. I can probably stop playing this right now. 
thought I should talk into the video for a moment while the other, while the the ghost was still playing. I was like, oh, the run's not over. The ghost is still going. I can talk to the video. Why not? I'm from this point. Got it. Got it. There's there's really nothing outside of a reroute. I don't think there's that much left to do with the category. It it had like good splits. Uh, let me. I can like move this video around to move the splits probably. I could have golded. I mean, I could start golding some of these splits again if I worked at them. But this run had a lot of very good splits. Had started off with a terrible level one, even though I got both the bomb drops. And um, and like that that plus eleven point five to recorder is based on a false gold. It's actually a pretty good overall recorder time. It's only plus, you know, 12.8, the best split times, but then we cut back to plus three at the end of level two where it matters. There shouldn't even be, there doesn't even need to be a recorder split, really. I'd be grinding RNG if I went to level eight or working out how to manipulate the Dango movement to be one of those two things. I think obviously four could be better. Four could always be better, though. It's it's a level that having your beam sword can significantly save time through the whole thing, and it's not necessarily all that easy to keep it. It should be easy to keep it, but things happen, and I lose it. So I think that'll do it for this.